welcome to all our listeners today. As your facilitator, let me start by making my introductions to you. I'm Wendy Gill, the Mixed Farming Officer for the Ag Services Unit based at Forbes for the Central West Local Land Services. So I'm really excited today to sit down in this virtual pre-recorded presentation with my colleague Sue Street. Sue is uh, going to talk to us today about different livestock production considerations and constraints that need to be uh, certainly managed and that producers should be aware of in regards to the current seasonal conditions. This event is part of the Ag Services ADAPT project and this project is supported through funding from the Australian Government National Land Care Program. Let me take the time to introduce my presenter today, Dr Sue Street. Sue is the Central West Local Land Services Livestock Officer and Sue comes to us with varied knowledges and passions around livestock nutrition. Sue has completed some rather interesting work which I look forward to her sharing some of her knowledge and experiences with the audience and uh, some of her most recent works involved her studies around her PhD which she completed in 2018. Her PhD was on ruminant nutrition and metabolism and she specifically looked at the differences in nutrient, di nutrient digestibility and rumen parameters between both merinos and dorper sheep. Some other really interesting work that Sue has been involved with, I know producers will really uh, pique their interest, is around her stint as a research assistant for Charles Sturt University at Wagga. She uh, did a lot of work around using plant DNA in faecal samples to diagnose plant poisoning. So I really look forward to the discussions today with Sue, both uh, drawing on some of that experience and knowledge that she has from some of that work, but also in, uh, in the discussion, also reviewing Sue's passion around working with producers using science and practical knowledge to improve their livestock production system. So I give a very warm welcome to Sue Street and it's a pleasure to have her here today and for, ha for her to have the time to sit down and have a chat to us. So um, Sue, while I change over this screen, I, I do give a very warm welcome to you and um, look forward to your presentation today. Thanks, Gwen, and thank you for the introduction. Um, hopefully my screen will be coming up shortly with my presentation. Thanks, Sue. Is that showing now, Wen? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, that certainly is. Okay, so um, like Wendy explained, today I'll be talking about uh, production considerations for livestock in the current season. So um, for the current season at the moment, we know we've got lots of green pasture about. Um, so I just want you to be to recognise that um, some of this green pick might be very high in moisture, um, which means that some of it could be low in energy because all our nutrients are found um, within the dry matter of a plant. So I just want you guys to be aware that really short, luscious, luscious grass could be very high in moisture, which means it's low in energy. Um, also, with the start of the cold season, um, we really need to be wary of those cold snaps. So those cold, windy, rainy, wet weather, um, we really wanted to monitor those because your energy requirements can increase by 20% in those cold, wet conditions. So stock such as uh, lambing ewes, uh, cows that are calving, um, animals in low condition or sick animals, we will really want to make sure that those animals are in some shelter. Um, and if you can move those, those, that livestock um, into those sheltered paddocks at least two to three days before the weather hits, that would be great. And also try and increase your, um, the amount of hay that you're feeding because that'll help produce a bit of heat for them as well. But keeping in mind, you don't want to give too much hay to 
your lambing ewes um, or your calving cows because they really have high energy needs at late pregnancy and early lactation. So I've got some five tips for healthy transition onto um, green pastures and also um, your winter crops. So first one is to vaccinate. Second one is to continue feeding. I'll, I'll discuss that a bit further um, in a few slides. Uh, to monitor these, your animals, beware of your toxins and your deficiencies and your control of your parasites. So vaccination is really important, uh, particularly if they're going onto lush green pastures, um, ones that are high in legumes and even um, onto your winter cereal crops. You really need to be careful for like black kidney, black leg and pulpy kidney. Um, so the, your best bet is if they have already had a vaccination, you could give them a booster and put them straight onto the pasture. But um, if they haven't had their booster in a while, I'd recommend waiting, you know, two to three weeks before you put them onto the pasture. You don't want to have got them this far um, to then um, have them pass away from um, one of the clostridial diseases. Um, so I'll also talk about supplementary feeding. So with the um, decrease of summer dominant pastures and now the increase of temperate pastures, um, it, we're kind of in that transition phase. So we've got quite, um, you know, we've got summer pastures that are quite low in energy and protein. And then we've got um, new growth coming through of the, the temperate pastures or your winter pastures. And they're still quite um, low in height and high in water. So I just want you guys to be thinking that in this transition phase, you may have to be still or start supplementing feeding some of your livestock. Um, also, if you're going to go on to um, some of your winter crops, such as like your winter wheat, um, your oats, that kind of stuff, just to remember to transition those stock onto that lush pasture. So we kind of recommend that you um, avoid putting your hungry stock onto those um, fresh pad paddocks. So if you can fill them up with hay um, and make sure your, your hay is you know, of medium quality um, and feed them in the morning and then put the, release them in the afternoon onto those fresh paddocks um, because livestock do most of their, 70% of their grazing in the morning and 30 in the afternoon. So if you um, give them that time to fill up on hay, it kind of helps decrease the risk there. Um, and then we kind of say that slowly over about seven to 10 day period, um, increase the amount of time that you're allowing them to transition onto that pasture. So initially you might only give them an hour or two in the afternoon um, and then take them off and then slowly transition them on while making sure that they've got a belly full of um, feed each time that you put them on. But if that is, if you can't do that, then we do recommend that you have um, medium to good quality hay available at all times into that paddock just because um, we don't want them to get sudden, sudden uptake of this lush feed and um, you know, they're at risk of pulpy kidney and bloat and you know, it takes seven to 10 days for these animals to, to adjust. And we are recommending that you use um, medium to better quality hay rather than just a poor quality hay um, if you aren't going to transition but having hay available onto these lush pastures um, just because um, medium to high quality hay means that they'll actually eat it um, and you want it to be palatable to them. Um, it's like a kid in a candy store. If you, you know, if you let them out, they'll go straight for all the candy. But if you give them just a little bit of something to help them um, adapt, that'll be great. So we don't want you wasting your poor quality hay because they just won't, won't, um, won't eat it. Um, and when I was talking about uh, supplement feeding, um, especially at the time, um, I just wanted to put a couple of examples of um, the, 
digestibility a bit of um, temperate pastures and the next slide will be of tropicals and how the digestibility of the plant um, and the growth stage affect your energy and your protein. So when you have, when it's highly digestible, so it's really active growth in green, you actually have high energy. But if your digestibility goes over 75%, that's when you have issues with having too much water. Because um, if, if your dry matter is 15% um, or lower, um, the animals actively can't eat enough to meet their demands. And then um, with tropicals, um, a lot of you might be seeing a lot of your um, late flowering coming to head tropical grasses at the moment. And as you can see, the digestibility is quite low and the energy is quite low. So you'll actually get weight loss in your stock. Um, and I know I was talking to the mixed farming officer, Cal, um, yesterday, and he said he's got a paddock with um, with, with some clover and um, other stuff coming through with his tropical pastures, but he's finding that his stock are sorting his um, temperates too much and not going for the tropicals. So he's had to pull them out because um, he really wants to get those, those temperate pastures coming through. So just be mindful um, that you may have to be supplementing a bit at the moment, just so you're getting the energy and the protein into some of the, your animals, especially those that are actively growing. Um, and because you don't want them to be eating out all your new pasture that's coming through, and that they also might um, be eating too much of your um, late flowering um, feed that's less digestible. Um, and a really good way that you could um, measure if you need to supplement some of your livestock um, is by using the drought and supplement feed calculator. Um, they have this new calculator that which part of it that allows you to measure your pasture. So your pasture guide is based on the progress manual and it's using the two um, the two graphs that I just showed you previously. And then you also enter your pasture details. So how many hectares you've got, um, what growth stage, like I was saying, which is based on those two um, two digestible digestibility um, slides I had earlier. Um, and it's also based on your pasture height and your pasture density. So, um, and then you're measuring your food on offer and if you're actually gonna meet the requirements of the livestock that you have. So just, just remember that um, density and pasture height have a huge impact. So you can actually have, you know, a fair bit of pasture there, but if your density is quite low, um, you just won't have the um, available feed there for your animals. Um, I guess another really big one would be um, definitely monitor your animals. Um, and poo is a really good way to monitor your animals. So especially if you're going on to lush green pastures, so like your winter crops, um, just be mindful of the amount of poo. Um, the higher the, the water content, the more poo that'll come out. Um, so just monitor that a bit, um, but it, all, it can also tell you if you've got too much fiber as well. So if you've got really, if your poo's really quite mound, like quite high and it's quite a large mound, um, it's telling you that there's way too much fiber in the diet um, and you need to probably um, increase the amount of energy that you have. Um, Bloat is probably an issue that we're going to see, especially in those areas that got a bit of that later um, rainfall. Um, so they didn't quite get the past growth that has died off like some other places. So there is a lot of um, clover and stuff like that coming through. So just really be mindful um, if you are um, putting stock onto um, pastures of high clover, just to watch out for bloat. Um, if if you can. Also, um, watch your weeds. So if you're putting on to sing, single cultivars like, um, you know, dual purpose, um, dual purpose wheat, um, oats, uh, canola, that kind of stuff, just be mindful of the weeds that are um, around the outside of your 
um, your crops um, because livestock do tend to try and hit those first because they're not used, they, we're not made to eat just one thing. So they will look for other feed first. And especially if you've um, sprayed recently, it can cause some of those weeds to become a lot more palatable. And there have been issues with um, plant poisoning with some of those weeds. Um, and as always, just monitor the condition of your animals. So collect, you know, view a couple of animals or, you know, select a few within your flock or herd and monitor them and see how they're going because condition really is a good indicator if if they're getting the right uh, the right energy that they needed at that they, that time of production. Um, number four is like beware of your toxins and your deficiencies. Um, so hypocalcemin, hypomagnesia, so um, grass tetany and milk fever are going to be a problem. Um, what tends to happen on lush green pastures is that there's high availability of um, uh, phosphorus, no potassium, um, and it stops, it reduces the amount that of um, calcium magnesium that can be absorbed by the animal. Um, so we really need to be mindful of that. So we're recommending that you have available um, some lime and salt or lime, salt and magnesium for your livestock, especially your um, pregnant ewes that are about to lamb and are uh, um, lactating as well. Um, that's really, really important to have available at the moment, um, especially coming out of drought to have yet yeah, lime salt magnesium and if um, you're finding the magnesium is they're not eating it you can either decrease the amount of magnesium or take the magnesium out um, because we have had some palatability issues with um, cosmag and stuff like that um, also be careful of your nitrates so um, some Certain pastures, um, there have been issues with nitrate poisoning, but also nitrate poisoning has also been occurring with certain weeds as well. So just keep an eye out on those. Um, and photosensitization. Um, although usually photosensitization does happen on weeds, it can it's also been seen on cereals and loosen and stuff. So just be mindful of that. Um, if you've seen signs of photosensitization, which is things such as um, like scabbing around the mouth, looking sunburnt, uh, swollen ears, that kind of stuff, it might mean that you've got to pull your livestock off, um, keep them in a darkish place, continue feeding them something and then um, seeing how they go. Um, and my last slide is controlling parasites. So um, with a lot of this rain, uh, which has been fantastic, um, worms have actually started to be a problem, even though we are starting to go into the colder weather um, and worm levels don't seem to be quite at the level in which um, drenching should occur. We are still recommending that you try and get some fecal samples so you can see what worms that you have, just so you're ready and prepared for um, th that summer, spring, summer um, influx of worms that will occur. Um, also be aware of the fly strike as well. I know it's starting to cool off, but next week's meant to be a nice hot week again. So just be careful of um, fly strike um, occurring. And the vets have also had a few issues with um, three day sickness as well, especially in those areas where water has been laying around and there's um, large amounts of um, mosquitoes. I know personally I can't really go outside after um, at dusk because I'm absolutely getting bitten alive so um, just be mindful of that. Um, these are all things that will probably die down a little bit um, coming into winter but you know we we might still have a few hot more few warmish days um, before we really hit get into the swing of winter. So just just be mindful of, um, of those things. So um, that is me for today. Um, so I can be contacted on my um, email or um, by the phone number available. So um, 
If you have any questions in regards to what I've spoken about today or in regards to um, anything to do with livestock nutrition or management, please don't hesitate to pick up the phone and have a chat. So, yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Sue, thank you very much for that presentation. That was a great wrap up of, um, of all the components that producers need to be uh, mindful of in the current season and given the changes that have occurred across New South Wales as well. So um, Sue, I know you were mentioning there uh, in your presentation about the really um, encouragement to producers to make sure they're regularly going back and, and doing that monitoring and checking uh, whether it's the faeces or whether it's some of their um, sort of check animals within their herd structures. Um, is there, from the changes that we've seen from a lot of the areas going in from that extensive drought period into some more uh, lush period of time, should they, how, how long should they be sort of monitoring those um, those livestock for? Is it is it uh, predetermined once they go out of that 10 day window when they're probably more regularly seeing those animals in that changeover um, from, from the diet situation? Or would you recommend a, a certain period of time that they should be continuing to monitor their animals for uh, across, across that ch transition stage? Um. I think the first 10 days are really, really important for you to, you know, monitor them um, once, if not twice a day or more. Probably once those 10 days are up, you can reduce that. But I still recommend, if possible, you know, still monitor your livestock as often as possible, you know, daily, every second day, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, things can change quite, quite quickly. So, um, yeah, the initial period, I'd say every day, um, you know, if not twice a day, but, and it also depends on the type of um, pasture or, or crop that you're on. So some are more high risk than others. So um, things like canola, if you're grazing uh, dual purpose canola, definitely monitor them very closely. Um, but yeah, so as often as you can would be, but at least once to twice a day for that initial 10 day period. Yeah, great, thanks. I think it's a great point to reinforce too that often we see a lot of these uh, conditions and uh, you know problems that sort of jump up, whether they're a clostridial issue or um, a bloat issue, they can be sprung up quite quickly on producers and um, and given the, the drastic change and change in pasture conditions as well as uh, for accessing of you know crops in into the grazing phases um, that they actually really are quite dynamic at this time of, time of year in terms of their growth and production so it's really important to continue to um, be vigilant around those issues just so you avoid um, having some critical losses um, and certainly if you are needing to um, seek some advice whether that's from Sue or from any of our district veterinarians um, with some animal health related issues certainly feel free um, to give us a call. So for our audience and listeners today um, on the screen currently you can see um, Sue's contact details as uh, she had in her presentation. You can also see I've included our ADAPT project manager's contact details, Pip Doolan. Um, so if you'd like to find out more information around the different uh, business unit fun focus or whether it's for soils, pastures or feed-based systems that we're, we'll be exploring um, and delivering to producers, hopefully in a uh, face-to-face uh, field day and also um, webinar or virtual context as well, but would like to be able to think that at some stage we um, will be able to engage in a multitude of um, normal activities. So if you'd like to engage with any of the Central West Ag staff uh, for this project, um, certainly for the, for the ADAPT project, Pip Julen uh, would be more than happy to answer your questions on upcoming events and, um, and the program for that project. So that brings us to the end of today's discussions. Um, so thank you very much for listening. For those of the listeners who are engaged on the online system, um, directly after this presentation, we will uh, actually have the opportunity to, for those participants to actually do a search 
survey and it's a quick five question survey so it uh, it will not take um, too much of your time and I thank any participant for giving us the feedback. I certainly know Sue and I both value your feedback in terms of what learnings uh, you may have got out of today's discussions and um, and certainly we look forward to that feedback. I'd like to thank Sue for her time in giving us the presentation today and I look forward as your host to once, once again having further discussions and presentations with you um, as part of the Ag Central West team's webinar presentations. So until that time, I will bid you a great day.